So um, I'm going to come at this from a different direction than I have before. So the whole, the whole smart cities thing is frustrating to me because it's really about optimization, incremental improvement, and, and I think we can just do a lot better. The planet needs to do better. So I want to talk about cities without, not, not doing with less, but getting rid of the old legacy systems and, and embracing all of the new opportunities that we have right at this moment in time. So I'll just go through a bunch of, so we're doing a conference called Cities Without, so we have a bunch of withouts, but I'll do a few of them. So mobility without cars, this is, you know, how cities are experienced today. We're at the end of the second mobility revolution. The first was trams and subways, second is cars. We're about to enter a new era, era <coughs> that I think will, will be without cars, and, and it will combine these three things, autonomy, sharing, and ultralight electric mobility. So we like to build things in our group. We're, we're building a, a new little vehicle somewhere between stationless bike share, ride share like Uber and Lyft. We call it a persuasive electric vehicle. Persuade you to shift to a more efficient mode. Persuade you to get more exercise. So in operation, you call for it like you would an Uber, and you can ride it to your destination. It's kind of fun to ride. We don't care about using autonomy for that unless you're disabled or elderly. It's constrained to bike lanes where there are no regulations currently, so that helps. And, but you, if you look here, it's, it's a social robot in, a, in the sense that if it works well, it interacts naturally with pedestrians. So if you notice, the woman in yellow smiled and the other one didn't even look up from her phone, which is what we were going for. So we're now building a third generation. It's being fabricated now at Nichinan in Nagoya, and we'll have it in our lab in May, and uh, we'll continue to do more testing. Housing without rooms. I think this is important. We, we need to get rid of parking spaces in cities and bedrooms, I, I believe. And we, so we've been working on tiny little apartments, it's 200 square feet. We did this one floor down a few years ago. But the idea is you think about architecture in four dimensions, think about time. So this, this little apartment had six different states and you can dynamically shift from one to the other. So you see you have a, a, a queen size bed and a, an office, a dining room for six. So the idea, is that easy is not good enough. You, it needs to be completely effortless to sustain these kind of transformations daily. So we launched a little company five years ago. We're doing pretty well now. We, we're working with developers from Vancouver to Miami. We'll be moving to Asia pretty soon. So this is a new product that, that I just designed for Ori. She wakes up in the morning making coffee. The bed goes away and now she has a living room. So these are the kind of transformations that we're we're very interested in. Order without planners. I think this is really important. Urban planning is sort of an obsolete 50, 100 year old profession, the way it's currently practiced. So what we do if it essentially is we pixelate the city, or actually create voxels, and then you can map uh, land use, density, demographic profiles, systems, whatever, to these little databases, and then the, me the metrics, uh, all of the visualizations, et cetera, can update in real time. This is really important. This is one way that we evaluate, in, in this case, Harvard Square compared to Kendall Square, density, diversity, proximity, energy. Uh, you can see a little bit of the math models. The point is that urban planners don't use these kind of metrics. Uh, the, and so we, 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 we have a consulting company that where we've been taking these ideas to scale. This is a big project in Hangzhou that we finished recently, five square kilometers. We, we use this approach. This, you see what he's doing here he is, is he's dynamically mapping land use and density and profiles, can delineate the paths that the vehicles take, define the mobility modes. We then use agent-based simulation to simulate all the no, new mobility modes. Simple things like red, bad, green, good. Okay, so this is walkable access to parks. So she's picking an area that's red, replaces a block with buildings with a park, and you can do that with all kinds of things. So the process is looking at these layers of visualization. So <clears throat> I don't have time to get into this, but I'll just mention it, economy without currency. Okay, local token economies that can incentivize pro-social behaviors, financing without banks, 
particularly fractional ownership that I think could be really important to lower the cost of housing. Uh, development without zoning, dynamic algorithmic zoning, these are projects that we're beginning to think about. Lots of other, you, you could talk about uh, health without hospitals, learning without schools, governance without bureaucrats, you get the idea. <laughs> so, October 1st, Hamburg, our conference, Cities Without, if you happen to be in Hamburg, come and join us. <laughs>